he was a victim of a very vicious social media platform, which actually disturbed a lot of uh, members of the industry, all because he reported about something that the president had actually said. So that's what you call, that's the impact, the repercussion of doing journalism under President Henry Duterte. Now don't take me wrong. Sometimes people think that whenever you speak something against the president, you're already contrary. They that there's this, this tendency to, to put a dichotomy between yellow cards and DTS journalists. And when you criticize what the president is saying, what his allies are doing, they would, they would automatically then uh, in a one way. But they don't even bother to check your record, your background, how it was during your time covering the previous administration or the administration that came before that. I'm, speak, I'm talking about this based on my own experience having covered um, technically four presidents, but I'm still fairly young. So that's the way it is, the way. But, um, the perspective in, of uh, Philippine media is that we are natural adversaries, like that old mindset. We try to confront the, the, the specific president and administration. But the problem now is, the basic question, I think one of the basic questions raised during this press, uh, press conference, during this forum is that, uh, is the media under siege? I would even hasten to say that media is under, uh, that, that there's an ongoing war being waged by the president against the media. And I'm, not, I'm not saying that because I'm not affiliated with uh, with ABS cbn or that I used to work with the Philippine Daily Choir. It's just the way it is. I don't want to sugarcoat it. If you ask me, there's a war against media. It's not necessarily uh, single-handedly waged by the president, but at the very least, he was in, he, he created this climate that allowed his own trolls, his own supporters, to fairly, as well as unfairly, attack mainstream media. And that, I think, is the biggest challenge confronting Filipino journalists now. To that the swarm of media. Okay? Shampre, I suppose this is not the only audience of this forum. One of us is on Twitter, on Facebook. So mommy, you mga away na sa atin. But that's that, that's the truth, eh? Uh, uh, that's a very concrete example. I spent a month in Davao City covering President Duterte shortly before he assumed office. I joined other reporters covering that uh, that transition period. So I was there when Duterte hurled uh, tons of invectives against media. I was sitting in front. I was there. 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 And uh, I was there when Montek na matal sila ng kami ng laway sa lakas na sinasabi niya. He was cursing media. And uh, at that point, we were thinking, uh, matagal magsimula yung press conference ni Duterte. Late and matagal magsimula. So while we while waiting for him, we were anticipating that perhaps he would soften a bit, that the first few lines coming from his mouth would somehow be reconciliatory uh, with media, but we were dead wrong. I think uh, during the first few sentences, that the F word, the PI word, I was surprised because in my fairly uh, long years in journalism, that was the first time that I was actually cursed. And I, I thought that was very personal to me. And to be honest, I I was thinking, how should we react? When you say react, should we, should we be very professional and just uh, stick to the issue and ask questions? Or should we rise as a person being insulted by this guy who apparently was voted by 16.6 .6 million Filipinos? But I don't think he had the license to, to, do that, to do that. But part of me, to be honest, was actually rejoicing also. Because I felt that a huge part of what he was saying was actually true. The media was corrupt. Okay? There are a lot of things that are very wrong in media, and you will find that out when you join the industry. And I hope you won't be discouraged, and I hope you won't be uh, recruited to the dark side. <laughs> because sometimes uh, it's very difficult if you're, if you're dealing with uh, young, impressionable, idealistic journalism students. On first year college, they discuss money on baho and media. But sometimes they, they fail to strike a balance between what media is for and what media is not. Right? So sometimes when they discuss money as a fourth year, and they make you know, mga masasama sa industry, sabi, magin yung nasabi sa namin, nag graduate na kami. 
So, so these are dilemmas of an, of an educator. Now going back to the uh, talk by the narrative, I think that was also very fair, but, but the way he delivered that message, part of me was rejoicing that somehow I could remain examined for a few million. But since the third is fond of uh, using the hypocrisy part, diba, that's how he does things, and I'm a hypocrite. I don't buy that because uh, I have a lot of levels of hypocrisy, right? but it doesn't mean that we're not supposed to struggle to work for what to do what is right. Because if we're going to argue with them, Kasi, there's no use living under the terrorist regime because we are all hypocrites. And if you're going to use that hypocrisy card, you can also use that against the terrorist because he identified three categories of corruption of journalists. Number one was the idealistic, the, the, the clean journalist. Number two, you may just make up the paper, but it's okay to say that. But if you're going to be a very purist. Uh, if you're going to be a purist when it comes to media corruption, and I think all of us should be, uh, should struggle to be purists when it comes to corruption. See, the third thing is when I eyes on media, and he admitted that. Your favors, you know, these people, these people are dominating the airwaves, they're controlling social media, they're very, very corrupt. They're very, very corrupt. If you ask me, corrupt to the most, because in media, we know who are corrupt and who are not. So sometimes, I say, when you comment on your Duterte allies in media, talking about corruption, etc., etc., but part of you would cringe because if only the, the rest of the public would know what these people, who these people are, that's my point. And then third, sabi niya, talaga mga hardcore corrupt uh, practitioners in media, and that's true. Parang ito talaga. Sometimes we would wonder na, bakit ba naging media na? Bakit ba naging report here? Basically, they're just using media uh, to legitimize their, uh, as a cover for the illegal activities that they're doing. That, that, that's very, very true. These are the things that I decided to talk about as part of the reaction, but this is not in any way meant to to discourage you. And then, yung binabangit ko kanina, climate of, I would like to call it climate of impunity when it comes to attacking media. Diba meron si Duterte? Problema natin yun, meron tayong ano yun. Numerical at saka definitional debate ng EJK. Let's simplify it. Hindi ako tayo yung mga risk group dito, mga sarili yun. Bila ako like Amnesty International. I'm talking about these things as a member of media covering, covering a very legitimate issue. One of those issues that we cover uh, in media, human rights. Okay? Ang hindi masyadong nakapaliwaring sa mga forum na ganyan ito is that bakit pa kasi nare-report pa yung mga pinagpatay? Marami naman, marami naman talagang pinatay since, since time of memory. And assuming that uh, the new uh, foreign secretaries also telling the truth accurately, that perhaps wala talaga yung wave of killings. But the point is, there are still killings. Right? Now, if you ask me, if you're a journalist covering these things, it would help if you do not discover the numbers or the statistics or even the cases. You try to understand the the wisdom behind the coverage of human rights, that there's such a thing as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, na kahit criminal yan, kahit suspected drug addict yan, kahit addict yan, he has to go to, he has to go through the due process. Now, these principles have to be clear to us as members of the media because it's very easy to be swayed if you listen to MOHA, if you listen to, to other uh, psychopaths of the president. It's very, it's very easy to be swayed. But it's a bit of a, it's fine. It's okay. That's your, that's your mindset. But it doesn't mean that you're not, you're not supposed to report about the, the contrary and who's in a So, I think these are the challenges, challenges that confront uh, members of the media at this point. Now, sure, let's also be careful because sometimes while doing our work, we also there's also the tendency of us being used by those who are actually just out to destabilize or to attack the president. And I'm talking about other uh, other groups, other forces affiliated with other political powers. So it's very difficult to be a journalist, more so under the current uh, atmosphere, the current environment that we have now. So I hope uh, this, this forum would serve as, a, uh, as an awakening, not exactly a rude awakening for us to 
to realize that uh, much is expected of us as journalists and you as future, as future journalists. Thank you.